Well, friends, I have a question for you. Have you ever been not invited into a group? Are you always invited? You're never excluded? That's good. Have you guys ever been excluded from a group or felt like you weren't welcome in it? All the time. Well, I hope not. Oh, she wants to give you kisses because you feel like you're excluded from groups. Well, when I was a kid, my best friend, um, when I was a kid, my very, very best friend decided that she was going to hang out with these other girls. And unfortunately, the other girls did not think that I was very cool. They thought I was kind of nerdy, which I was. <laughs> they thought I was kind of goofy, which I was. Yeah. Yep. And so they told my best friend that she can't hang out with me anymore. And so for about two years, I had to sit all by myself on the playground. Hey. True story. I know. So how does it make you feel? How do you think I felt when I had to? Yeah, I was sad. What else did I feel when my friends wouldn't play with me anymore? I was totally left out. I got to watch them giggle and laugh and play, and I was left out. So maybe if you saw me on the playground, and I was sitting all by myself, and I looked very sad, what's something you could do? Thank you. Go play with me. Yes. Because at that point, I would have played even um, Bombardo or Dodgeball. I love Dodgeball. I, I despise that game. I That's okay, you don't have to learn how to play dodgeball. It's horrible. You throw balls at people. I didn't like it. And if you get a ball in the head, you automatically, the other person gets out. And I was like, well, that's great. Well, I have to take a ball to the head to get the other person out? Because I wasn't going to hit them with a ball. It's part of the game. I know it's part of the game. I don't like it. <laughs> but if you would play with me, I would have played dodgeball. That's how desperate I was for uh, friends. I, think I have a bunch of versions of a lot of games. Well, that's, I would love for you to teach me all those versions when I was that age because, man, I felt left out. So today we're going to talk about how to see people who are left out because sometimes we don't even see them. We're so busy playing dodgeball. Ugh. Um, but how to see people who are all by themselves and might feel alone and then how to make them feel like they're included instead of excluded. Make them feel better. Just like Kaiba makes people feel better by giving them kisses. Yes, she'll give you kisses. Ugh. I had a dog. Yeah? Oh, will you guys pray with me today? Kaiba, can we pray? Sit. Thank you. Stay. Holy God, um, help us to see people who feel excluded, who, people who are sad, so that we can welcome them in and we can make them feel better so they aren't left out, and they don't feel sad. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So for this whole month, we, have been, we are going to focus on um, how to welcome others and how to make other people feel um, like they're included and to show them hospitality. And last week, we talked about welcome. And welcome means uh, that people come in to our church, to our homes, to our lives, and we welcome them. And then we fill their basic needs. So maybe we'll offer them some water or something to drink, something to eat, um, hopefully a bathroom. And then uh, maybe we'll let them rest. But then the next step after we've welcomed someone is to show them hospitality. And last week we talked that hospitality is creating a safe space where people can be vulnerable so that hopefully a meaning connection can be made. But that's really difficult, especially when people are different from you. And so today we're going to look to Jesus and how he was able to welcome someone who was untouchable, unwelcome, and excluded. And that man was the man with leprosy. So a man with a skin disease came to Jesus and begged him for healing. But we need to know a little bit about leprosy in Jesus' time. Because remember, this is before the Enlightenment. So it's before the scientific question of why. So I always tell the kids, take all that science stuff that we've taught you and put it out of your brain. 
and then think about a skin disease. So they couldn't tell the difference between leprosy and acne, leprosy and eczema, leprosy and an allergic rash, right? So they would think, okay, they have some kind of a skin disease. So that person would then go to the priest, and the priest would look at their skin, and if it met all these certain criteria, they would be officially labeled as a person with leprosy. So according to Leviticus, I need a slide because I didn't memorize all that. Leviticus 14, 45 through 46, it says, the person who has the de defiling disease shall wear torn clothes, let the hair of his head be disheveled, and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. So this man comes to Jesus with torn clothes, long hair, uh, disheveled, and he had to cover his upper lip and scream to anyone who comes by, unclean, unclean. And so this man, if you think about it, has not been able to be with his family, his friends. He couldn't even be within the camp or the city. He had to make camp outside, and that's where we have the leper colonies. He had to go outside with nothing, right? He couldn't go back to his home because he was unclean. So he goes out of the city with nothing, and he can't be around any other people other than those who also have the skin disease. So this man can't be touched, can't be included, can't be apart. So he comes up to Jesus, breaking the rule. He's not supposed to come near anyone who is clean. So he comes up to Jesus, and he says to Jesus, if you are willing, I know you can heal me if you are willing. The reason he had to ask Jesus if he was willing was because it's also law that anyone who is unclean that touches anything or anyone, that thing and that person becomes unclean. So to even come into the space of Jesus is wrong. Because what happens if he trips? What happens if some part of him accidentally touches Jesus? Jesus becomes unclean. So he's looking at Jesus and saying, are you willing to give up your dignity? Are you willing to give up your purity? Are you willing to give up everything to heal me? Because I know you can. I just don't know if you're willing. And Jesus says, of course I am willing. Be clean. And then it's so interesting Jesus touches him. Did you notice? Disgusting skin disease to the point that he is deemed unclean, yet Jesus chooses to touch him. Now think about all of the other healings that we've talked about that Jesus has done. Does Jesus have to touch in order to heal? No! Jesus doesn't even have to be present. There are stories of Jesus healing where he says, go back to your house and you'll find that your daughter is healed. He wasn't even there. And yet this time, he decides the best way to heal this man who has a skin disease is by touching. He touches a man that hasn't been touched in a long time. He provides what the man needs. And what the man needs is to be touched, is to be included, is to be accepted. So Jesus might have healed him from a skin disease, but he actually healed the man of what he needed most. And that was to be touched, to be included. What would we be willing to do? Give up our honor, give up our purity, in the eyes of, of others, to fulfill the desperate need of someone to belong, to be included, to be seen as acceptable as a child of God. Because Paul tells us in, the, in Romans how important that is. 
Paul says uh, that we are to judge ourselves first with sober judgment. Because we talked about how difficult it is to show other people uh, hospitality, to provide a safe space where they can truly be themselves, where we can truly be ourselves, be vulnerable. That's not easy. This man with leprosy, it was not easy for him to go up to Jesus. It's not easy to be vulnerable with someone else and to ask them to fulfill a need that we have. So Paul says we have to look at ourselves with sober judgment because it's a lot easier to judge other people, right? I am pretty amazing, right? Because of all of these reasons, I'm pretty amazing. But if we look at ourselves with realistic and honest judgment, and the next part is the worst part, because we have to look at ourselves with honest and sober judgment according to our faith. So that means we have to look at our own faith. What would Jesus do, right? So when someone comes up to us that is unclean, that is on the outside, that doesn't fit what we think is right, and then we have to look with sober judgment at ourselves. And what do we find? A sinner. Oh, it's a lot easier to look at myself the way I want to. But God says, mm-mm, we got to look at ourselves with sober judgment, with realistic and honest judgment. Because then when we go before someone who is on the outside, who is excluded, as a kid, was I weird? Of course. Right? So you see me on the playground all by myself. When I was a kid, yeah, I judged other people, right? But yet we are able to see through our faith that we are to include and not exclude. We are to welcome the unwelcomed. And Paul says then, that is what it is to love sincerely to love honestly, to love someone that seems unlovable. And then Paul goes through and gives us a whole bunch of other stuff that we're supposed to do as disciples of Jesus Christ, one of which is to cling to what is good and hate what is evil, like dodgeball. We used to call it bombardo, but dodgeball. Um, because dodgeball is evil. Um, but have you ever heard people say you should never use the word hate because it's such a mean word? Um, but if we look at other places in the Bible that use this word hate, we find, oh, that one, um, Luke 14, 25 through 26. Now a large crowd was traveling with Jesus and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and child, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself cannot be my disciple. Um, doesn't that seem contrary to the commandment, honor thy father and mother? We're supposed to hate our father and mother? I'm confused. So hate, if we look at it in Greek, um, another translation based on the context in which it's used is to leave. So if we want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and God calls us to go with him, then we are to leave our father and mother, our wife and husband, our sister and brother, and yes, we are to leave that life that we had itself. And then we, we become new in Jesus Christ. So when we look at the, the Romans verse, it says cling to what is good, and hate what is evil. So the opposite of cling is leave. So we are to leave what is evil. So when I am asked to join a dodgeball group, I say, no. And then I leave because I don't want to get hit by a ball. Because dodgeball is evil to me. It might not be evil to you. Um, but yeah, I hate it. Thus I leave it. But if we look at what Paul says after we do all of these things, the last thing he says is, and show hospitality to strangers. 
because hospitality is central to being a follower of Jesus Christ. Whew. That's difficult, especially when we're dealing with people who are different than each and every one of us, right? When someone is different than us, we're still called to provide space that is safe for each of us to be vulnerable so that we can create a meaningful relationship. And that means we need to honestly judge ourselves based on our faith. We have to judge our prejudice. We have to judge our own judgments about others. And we have to be able to open ourselves up to understand the other person so that we can create that meaningful relationship. And that is not easy because as we said last week, what is different is scary. What is different is uncomfortable. But that is, what, that is what God calls us to do. So yeah, we're gonna get uncomfortable getting out of our comfort zones and having a relationship with someone who is different than us. Yes, it is going to be difficult to look at our prejudices, to be honest with ourselves about how we see people who are different than ourselves. But in order to show hospitality, which is central to our faith, that is something we are all called to do as disciples of Jesus Christ. We are called to love sincerely and to show hospitality. And remember from last week, hospitality means loving the stranger. Amen.